Hey guys, good afternoon. It's been a bit, let's catch up. So I went to the movies, obviously. Here I am, talking about it. I noticed the seat that we picked, I'm sitting down, right underneath an air conditioning vent. It's not that big of a deal. So the movie starts, I'm getting really cold, but it's really, it's not, a, it's not that big of a deal. Movie's going, everybody's having a great time. I look over to just scratch my arm, I have frostbite all over my arm. It's not, it's really not a big deal. It's okay, people get that at movie theaters all the time. I'm watching, trying to follow these characters, go on this journey, and I, I start like nodding off. Can't really feel my body a lot. Don't, I don't know what it was, but I just was kind of nodding off here and there. And, and then all of a sudden, uh, it, it was like as though everything just cut out and then the credits started. I looked around, to see what was going on. Maybe it was the projector or something like that. Everybody else was dead. I don't. Maybe you guys can tell me if this has happened at your theater. Um, there was uh, giant icicles falling out of the air vents, and some people have been impaled. Some people uh, died from severe frostbite, losing their toes and their feet. Uh, one guy was trying to eat his own leg, just to just to try and have something in his body. Um, yeah, it was cold. Yeah, this is a great big picture show. I'm Spencer Howard Belden. Glassless, no glasses right now. I'm trying the contact game out. Trying it out hard. As always, the great big picture show is my outlet to talk to you about the things I love and the things I don't in all the movies that I see. And I gotta be honest, it's been uh, slow goings. It's been slow goings. I haven't had the opportunity to see a bunch, but lately it's seeming like a handful of very, very exciting things are gonna be coming out, so I'm looking forward to it. For this week, I'm a few days short, but even still, I'd like to talk about the very mysterious and very intriguing 10 Cloverfield Lane. Now, coming into this movie, I went in completely fresh. I think I had read a story about it in January. And considering the secrecy surrounding the idea, J.J. Abrams had wanted it this way, I didn't even watch a trailer. I just wanted to go into it fresh. I was a big fan of the original Cloverfield movie. Now, 10 Cloverfield Lane is the semi-continuation of the original J.J. Abrams-produced Cloverfield movie. Now that one launched the career of Matt Reeves, and I'm assuming with this one as well, J.J. Abrams also produced, is hoping to launch the career of first-time director Dan Trachtenberg. And I've got to say, considering uh, not knowing much about it, outside of guessing a fair amount from the posters and some pictures and things like that, that Dan Trachtenberg uses the film very effectively, uh, shoots very effectively, 10 Cloverfield Lane will be a nice thing to put on his resume. It's quick, it's fast, it's very entertaining, and it shows nice skills as a director. Now, without spoiling anything or giving too much away, what we essentially have here is the flip side of the original Cloverfield where we had the Cloverfield found footage, outdoor, running around, being chased by the gigantic monster. Whereas 10 Cloverfield Lane is confined to a disaster bunker with three characters. It's essentially a three-act play. As I said before, it's fast, it's entertaining, and I could easily say this is one of my favorite kinds of movies. Very small in scale, very, very interesting actors choosing this sort of thing to support. It has the recipe to make for a very, very engaging film. Unfortunately, I do feel as far as script and character development, there's a fair amount of drag. And they certainly squeeze a fair amount of drama and tension out of the confines of this idea. But as the movie runs on, it does seem like they begin to kind of run out of steam, especially towards the last third of the movie. Now I'm going to switch gears real quick because I think all of us, as a group, as a society, needs to... Let's have a moment of silence and a moment of appreciation for John Goodman.
Here's a guy that's been extremely underappreciated, undervalued as an actor, always being cast as the third tier supporting actor, and he's always, always shined as those characters. So it's completely refreshing and amazing to see a guy like this get a meteor thick kind of role where he can really chew into it and have a great time. And he very clearly does, chewing scenery left and right, screaming at everybody and slamming things. I think I could have watched an entire movie where he lived in the bunker by himself and then like a bug gets in there and he tries to kill the bug the whole time. Also, one of my favorite actresses working around, uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead in the lead role. Lead role as Melissa. She's great, strong, very fierce, very confident, and very emotive in ways actresses her age don't seem to go for. She just seems very vulnerable and very palpably real. And also, rounding out the cast, John Gallagher Jr. He's well known for The Newsroom and Short Term 12, and he's great here as well, being very vulnerable, supportive, nice bit of comic relief throughout the movie. And this is where I wanted to jump back in with the script. Out of the three characters, John Gallagher Jr.'s character is the most developed. I cared the most about his character. His uh, story was very engaging. He had a very, very interesting and engaging personality. It drew me in very nicely. John Goodman's character is pretty well developed as well, but I think a lot of that comes from John Goodman himself and his gusto with the character. On paper, they give you certain things here and there that don't feel entirely full. And I'm not somebody who has to have an overextension of character depth to be connected to them, but if you're going to rush me into a movie like this, which is fun and extremely exciting, but if you're going to do it that way without really developing further with certain people, those characters have to have a very specific or interesting kind of personality. And unfortunately, Mary Elizabeth Winstead does not. She doesn't have much of a personality. Her character is diluted down to phrases such as, I just wish there was something I could do. I do what I always do when things get hard. I run away. There's not a whole lot to root for outside of the fact that John Goodman yells at her a lot and she feels like she's in danger. So that was a little bit disappointing. Um, also, like I had mentioned before, the third act kind of falls into territory that I kind of wish it hadn't gone into. I don't want to say too much or give too much away, but um, I was disappointed in the direction that they decided to go with, considering the entire buildup and idea that they were working with. Those things being said though, I would take 10 movies like this a year over a very, very standard cliche genre piece. I love that it came out of nowhere. I love that these great actors decided to support it. And I love the direction and the ideas in which they decided to take this franchise. If we are going to perpetually continue making sequels and remakes and revamps and overdues and threequels and the... If we're going to keep doing that, at least get inventive about it. And this is certainly that. But once you tear all those things away, what we're left with is a fun and exciting semi-action thriller um, with not a lot of depth, not a lot to chew on. Outside of other movies that are a lot like this, it uses a lot of the same tricks, a lot of the same turns. Considering those things, my recommendation would be it's that it's a solid okay. Solid okay. It was fun. Love all the actors. Love the idea of it. Just wished it had been fleshed out a bit more. Wish it had been developed a bit more. I wish the progress had been further fulfilled. This, as always, is The Great Big Picture Show. My name is Spencer Howard Belden. Thank you so much for watching. Beautiful. Mwah, mwah. Please like, share, and subscribe. Everything you see with this face on it. Let me know what you like and what you dislike and what else I could see out there. Please have a good day. Please have a good night. And as always, please go hug somebody. Please go hug somebody to keep them warm. Rawr!